Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you have an awesome day. And I'm talking about Luminar 3.1 in this video. And specifically, I want to talk about the Accent AI 2.0 filter. So if you have Luminar 3.0, the original Luminar 3, that is, this is a dot release. This is 3.1, so it's a free update to previous owners. If you don't have Luminar 3 yet, you can get it at the link below. Um, Accent AI, uh, AI stands for artificial intelligence, and it's it's kind of a super filter. It's like the easy button. It does a lot of things to a photo. It adjusts uh, tones. It helps a little bit with colors and contrast and details, uh, exposure. I mean, it does a lot of things. It's really cool. I've used it on a lot of photos that I've edited in the past and a number of these videos. I've even include, included it in a lot of the presets that I've built and sold um, on my blog. But... Um, they made it even better. So I want to jump into that and I want to show you kind of what it uh, what it does uh, for those of you that aren't familiar and show you how well it works. And then I also want to show a little bit of a comparison to Accent AI 1.0. So let's just jump in and start right now. So here we are in the first photo and let me just show you as you drag the slider to the right, your photo gets better. It's magic, as I said. Now, it doesn't remove spots. I've got a spot on my lens there. Uh, there may be some other things I want to do to this photo, and by maybe, I mean like straighten the horizon, Jim. That's crooked. Uh, the truth is I probably need to see a chiropractor. All my photos are crooked. But anyway, I just want to show you how easy to use this filter is because it's literally a slider, and if you can't use that, um, you know, well, you can use it. Let's just leave it at that. So um, it's it's that easy. It's fun, right? So let me go to the next photo. Let me show you what I wanted to do also is show photos of different types um, and different lighting conditions, really. So obviously the first one was broad daylight. This one is uh, not broad daylight, right? So this is London. Uh, all these are single exposures, unedited, and um, they're all JPEGs. It works just the same on RAW files. Uh, but here you go, kind of dark in the foreground, a lighter in the sky. Um, and boom, I mean, it looks pretty magical. So I think that just works great. Um, here's a, an example, right? Uh, you might want to go like that and drag it all the way over there. And you, like, I really got a bright foreground. And the sky, I think, I mean, look at the before and after. The sky just pops. But, you know, you can also duplicate these things. So you could add that a second time. And some of you might say, oh, my God, that's too much. Um, and, and it's too much for me. But I wanted to point out that you could do that and then you could do things like tone that down a little bit just to get a little bit more of a bump. If you wanted to go something like that by with a full duplicate, you create basically an HDR kind of look, at least in this photo. Now it's going to vary in every photo, but that's something you could do is just slap it on there a second time or third or whatever if you wanted to do. But again, I mean, if you look at it before and after, obviously a gorgeous sunset, but if you look at the sky in the before and you look at the sky in the after, I mean, it's really popped a little bit. And in fact, I'm going to remove that second instance. Now look at the sky before and after. The tones, uh, the colors look great. I mean, it's a little bit more contrast. I just, I think it looks gorgeous, to be honest. So here's another one, right? So let me just drag this filter uh, or this slider to the right. I mean, just look at that. I mean, it lit up the foreground so well. There's the before, there's the after, and the sky. Once again, look at the sky. There's the before, and there's the after. It's just a touch of color adjustment and maybe a tiny bit of brightness in the sky. I think it looks fabulous. In fact, I don't know, honestly, that I would do anything else to this photo besides drag the AI 2.0 filter all the way to the right. I mean, I, I'm done, right? So that's the beauty of this. Now, let me go to this one. Here's something that I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to go all the way on that one. I'm going to duplicate it again. And you're going to say, oh, God, that's maybe too much. And it is. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the brush on that second one. And I'm going to type uh, or click on the erase. I'm going to come in here with the, um, the erase. And I'm going to erase it from all these areas because that was a little too much for me there. But I really like it on the water and the sky. So I'm going to say done. And before and after, there's before and there's the after. That's AI filter at basically, oh, I was 98. I should have been 100. I didn't go all the way, but I meant to. Um, I think the sky and the water looked really good. But on that second one, uh, let me turn that off. You know, I wanted a little bit more pop in the sky and the water, but I didn't I didn't really want to do anything else with the, uh, with the land, right? So there you go, before and after. Really, I think, made a difference in the, uh, in the photo. Now, again, there's a spot there. There's some things that I would need to fix in the photo. I would probably use negative structure and smooth out the sky and the water a little bit. But I think the photo is looking pretty cool. So that's another idea. You know, 
uh, use it a second time, but use it selectively and paint it in or you know erase it from certain areas of the photos. And hey, Jim took a picture of a human. Look out, people, I'm getting crazy. Um, I did take a picture of a human. So I went to a drink and click and they have models and uh, photographers show up and shoot the models. So I go to these sometimes. It's fun to socialize with the photographers. And admittedly, I'm not a portrait person, um, but I'm working on it, right? Hey, I'm trying real hard here. So um, look at this. I mean, that just looks great. Now, I would probably, and I'm going to 100 just to show you what it'll do to the photo. I don't know that I would go to 100 every time. I'm not recommending that you blast it all the way every time. I think in this case, I'd probably add a bit of a vignette in, maybe a little bit of inner light. Um, but I mean, look at the before and after. There's the before and the after. I think that looks marvelous, people. I'm, I'm really just happy with it. So um, I think that was the last photo. Yeah, that was the last photo I wanted to show you. But I wanted to compare it to a couple of photos from um, Accent AI in the Luminar 2018. This is Accent AI number one. So here it is at 100. There's the before and there's the after. Now let me go back to Luminar 3. Let me, uh, wait, hang on. It's the bridge. I gotta remember what photo it is. There it is. Here's the bridge in Luminar 3, Accent AI 2.0 at 100. And now, let me go to Luminar 2018, Accent AI 1.0 at 100. So 1.0, 2.0. Now, they're not lining up exactly because of the way the, uh, uh, the you know, there's a little bit of a, a change in terms of the, uh, the alignment. But if you look at the photo, the sky, the foreground, I can't really, I mean, a slight, it's a minor difference, right? So that's something I wanted to point out. Depending on the photo, you may or may not see a big difference. Um, if you don't have Luminar 3, I highly recommend getting it. You'll get 3.1 if you buy it now. You're gonna get this as a free update, so you're gonna get it anyway. But the key thing I wanted to show you is that, let me close that from Luminar 2018. I don't care to save it. But what I do wanna show you is this. Look at her skin, there's a 100, and look at her skin, very orange. Let me go back to Luminar 3, and let's go see this young lady. Here we go, look at her skin, tell you what. Let me get rid of the vignette filter. Give that a second, I'm just gonna take that off. Okay, we're at 100 with 2.0, and here we are 100 at 2. Point, uh, excuse me, at 1.0. Look at her skin, much more orange, and her skin here, much more subtle, more natural tones, right? Even in the arm, if you look in her, her upper arm here and her left arm, much more orange, right? So it's picking up the glow from that light would be my guess. Um, or maybe it's just a skin tone thing, I'm not sure. However, that's the 1.0 version and that's the 2.0 version. I think they've done a great job with this. There are some other updates in Luminar 3.1. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned them at the beginning of the video, but it has to do with improving sync adjustments like um, cropping and cloning and things like that won't go over from photo to photo because then it may not make sense, right? Uh, you've got better support for RAW plus JPEG uh, and you've got some better sorting options and things like that. But primarily for me, the big thing is Accent AI Filter 2.0. Um, I think is a, uh, an improvement over 1.0, especially around skin tones. In the other images, um, every one of these images that I showed you in this video using 2.0, I looked at with 1.0, I don't see a big difference, um, except in the portrait. So it's definitely better in terms of recognizing humans uh, and skin tones and getting those right. So I think it's a massive improvement. And unlike me, a lot of you probably shoot portraits. I do not shoot a lot of them, but I will be using them on a lot of photos from this event, or excuse me, I'll be using Accent AI 2.0 on a lot of um, photos from this event because I think it's doing a great job with the lighting because it's at night um, and I've, uh, you know, it does a great job of skin tone. So that was really it. Just a kind of a quick um, update on Luminar 3.1, which you can get today. So you should be able to download your free update if you already own Luminar. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm back from my travels, so I'm getting caught up on things. I got more videos planned. I got a vlog I filmed um, in Seattle that I just need to compile and put together. And if you missed my San, uh, San Francisco vlog, um, you can get it uh, in my channel. I'll put a link down below as well. Check it out. It was one of my, uh, probably my favorite vlog I've done so far. I had a lot of fun walking around San Fran in my free time. I was out there on a business trip and um, got some good stuff. So check it out if you wanna um, check it out. And that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon and... Adiós.